Hey guys, what's going on? Uh, glad to be back here. Took a little two-week hiatus, but I'm um, back again. Uh, gonna go ahead and go into the week eight recap and the week nine preview. Um, looking at the matchups here from week eight, a lot of blowouts, not really a whole lot of close scoring except the one game that I'm gonna jump into that was decided by one point on Monday night that really went down to the final minutes of that game. Uh, so that was really interesting to watch. I was actually just watching the game for this reason. Um, so let's hop right into it. Um, you know, going on his uh, two two game winning streak here. Uh, Pounder, <laughs> Ponder's pussy pounders. It's the first time I get to say that. It's kind of fun. Uh, Nico, uh, edging out uh, Aaron, 96 to 56. A 40 point game here. Um, Nico jumping up to two and six. Aaron falling to three and five. That's three games in a row he's lost, and that's, you know, now we're trying to see some true colors at his team. But you really can't judge this one for Aaron. I mean, you look at his bye weeks <laughs> on this one. He got fucked. He had Forte on the bye. The Bears defense, Robbie Gold, and Aaron Rodgers. We're talking about, you know, pretty much his whole starting roster was on the bye or hurt. Andre Johnson was out this one. Um, even his other running back, Sean Green. So Aaron was pretty much destined to lose this game. Um, you know, but Nico got some good, you know, promising starts. Drew Brees actually struggled in this one. Actually, he had 10 points. But Ray Rice came out with a stud. Three touchdown game, 27 points. Um... Everybody else was kind of pedestrian. He got, you know, uh, nine points from Larry Fitzgerald, but that was really it. Um, got double digits from defense and kicker. But, you know, Nico, 96 points. So he's showing some life here. Um, you know, maybe play spoiler the rest of the way. But good two-game winning streak for uh, Nico. Uh, on to um, Polish Pounder versus Bolingbrook Blue Ballers. Um, Mark and John in this one. Um, Mark taking this one 100 to 58. Uh, jumped to three and five here. Uh, John, second loss in a row, he drops to four and four. Uh, John really couldn't get anything going. Uh, you know, Reggie Bush, just you know, good start for him, got 11. But uh, you know, Mendenhall had nine, Bradshaw had eight, so his two stud running backs kind of put up stinkers again. You know, it turned around the bye. Um, pretty tough to to get anything going there. Fitzpatrick had 14, Bush had 11. That was his only two double-digit guys. Uh, on the other hand. LaShawn McCoy came out in a big way, had 185 yards, two touchdowns, about 40 receiving yards. So he got 31 points. Tom Brady continues to struggle a little bit fantasy-wise. You know, his last, hasn't put up 20 points since week three. Uh, Ryan Matthews, yeah, he was okay. Uh, Ryan Terrain, just holy shit, he sucks. Um, but A.J. Green having a monster rookie year puts up another 12. Mario Manningham a 12, and then 49ers defense continues to be studly. Putting up 13 there, the uh, number five defense right now. I had Roddy White on the bye, um, so you know I, he needs to get it going if I want to do anything in this league. Um, so you know, promise for me. Uh, you know, John's struggling a little bit there, but I look for him to bounce back next week um, in week nine. Let's go down to uh, another matchup that was kind of a blowout was uh, Megatron's Army versus Titletown USA. Uh, you know, two other active owners, um, especially adding Joe DeBald. I think that really helps our league guys. I really like Joe in the league. Um, not only is he good looking, but he is very active. He'll write polls. Um, you know, he will respond to polls. He's on here almost every day, him and Jared. So I think, you know, them as owners are great. Um, and I think even Joe will be brought aboard next year as his own team, uh, depending on, you know, what other owners are doing. But looking at this matchup, uh, you know, Jared had two goose eggs from his two starting running backs. I mean, you're not going to win any, any games with those goose eggs. And I mean, had he maybe put in a couple other guys? You don't know, but he was kind of, he was, he was hard up. He had Ingram was out, Javid Best was out, Felix Jones is out. He had no running backs to start. Uh, he did get 17 from Steve Smith, who continues to have an awesome year. I mean, you look at this guy's numbers. He's the number three receiver. I mean, anybody going into this season would have thought, yeah, right. I mean, Steve Smith passes prime. Well, Cam Newton is uh, making Steve Smith fantasy relevant again. Uh, looking at Eli Manning, another 21 points from him. So Eli Manning surprisingly good this year. Looking over at Brock, um, his running backs continue to struggle. But, I mean, his quarterback-receiver combos are just picking this league apart. Looking at Matt Stafford and Calvin Johnson, you know, combining for 42 points, that's just huge when you can get that quarterback-receiver double-point combo. Uh, Bengals defense, good start for Brock there. Got him 20 points. Jason Hansen continues to be a great kicker. Got him 11. Uh, Calvin with 18, like I said. But you look at Chris Johnson, who just continues to struggle, I mean, mightily. 
Uh, he's only had two double-digit uh, fantasy outputs two, all year. Uh, one game over 100 yards, one touchdown. I mean, the guy has to find his groove, right? I mean, and if he starts firing on all cylinders, Brock will not lose a game the rest of the year. But if his running backs continue to struggle, you know, if there's one, one game that Matt Stafford can't connect with Calvin Johnson, it's going to be a rough going for him. But he's got Mike Wallace. Um, you know, you look at his bench, he had Nate Washington. Good 15 points sitting on a bench, but, you know, who are you going to pull for, for him? Uh, so 97-68 victory for Brock. He's 8-0. and oh. Uh, Jared falls to three and five. Hopping over to the next matchup. This was a pretty close matchup here. Um, Make it Wayne versus Team Badasses. Uh, both teams are now four and four after the Eric loss and Mike's win. Um, looking at Eric, he got you know Arian Foster's really come alive here the past few weeks. This guy's the number six running back after starting out the first three games with just three points. So I mean, Arian Foster's really coming into terms with where Eric wanted to draft him. Um, Shab had 17. Beanie Wells continues to have a nice year. 14 points for him. Um, Ravens defense another 10. You know, Eric scored 95. Let me uh, take a look at the bench here. Pretty much a lot of guys in the bye with Jennings. That was a big hit for him. Plaxico. So bye week kind of hurt Eric here. But the big one I want to go to is uh, Mike's team here. Steven Jackson finally coming through with a big game. He had 30 points. Maurice Jones drew with 13. Ben Roethlisberger finally starting to come into form with 20. Victor Cruz starting in the flex at 15, but the big one was the Lions defense came up with 28 points. I mean, they were all over Tim Tebow. If anybody watched that game, Tim Tebow looked lost. He looked worse than any start I've ever seen him, um, college or pro. So uh, Lions defense really harassing him there. But uh, like I said, Mike jumps to 4-4. Four four. He's tied for second in the NFC. Eric tied for second in the AFC with those 4-4 four four records. And if you guys are noticing, the standings are really close. Besides Brock at the 8-0, everybody is within a game or two of each other, guys. Nobody is out of this race yet. So, I mean, you got to stay in there. Um, but here's the matchup of the week after the fact you watch it. Uh, the Regulators scoring 114 to Kiss My Ashes 113. This game, game, this game came down to Monday Night Football, Chiefs-Chargers, um, Pretty much, if the Chargers would have or the Chiefs would have scored at all after they scored their 20 going into overtime, besides that field goal, I mean Ashley would have beat him by one. It, you know, if they would have threw for a touchdown in the overtime, Ashley would have won. It was just it was crazy how many consequences could have played out against Jobby and for Ashley. But Jobby hangs on to the victory, got 114 to 113. There was actually a lucky play in this one. Uh, Antonio Gates catches a touchdown on the sideline, but they get him for pushing off, and he barely touched the guy. And I was like, holy shit, that, that just threw the whole fantasy matchup you know, out of the way. Ashley's going to win this one. But Chargers defense come up with a pick late. You know, Jabby pushes up two more points. That was It was just crazy to watch. I know Ashley was pulling her hair out, and Jabby actually had to go to work. So he was like, or he had to go to work the next day, so he stayed up late for it. But anyway, breaking down the matchup, you look at Ashley's team. Crazy. Cam Newton getting 24 again. Adrian Peterson really coming alive. 27. Um, Macklin with 11. Greg Olson 13. It was, it's really a shame that Ashley lost this one. If you look at the if you look at the points, I mean she she couldn't have done anything wrong here, guys. I mean 113. She deserved to win. But Jabby getting Frank Gore and Fred Jackson both 19 apiece. Fred Jackson, I mean, continues to just be amazing. He's uh, number three running back still, but double digit fantasy points every start, guys. Fred Jackson, probably the best value pick of the draft. Michael Vick had 24 as he picked apart Dallas. Anquan Bolden with 14. Nick Novak, you know, the 14 points on the Monday night. Just, I mean, that was such a great game to watch, especially fantasy-wise watching this um, go down. Anyway, uh, I know I'm getting a lot of talking here, guys, so I'm going to run through the Week 9 matchups real quick. Um, like I said, it's been a while, so I'm really excited to start doing the videos again. But I really want to hop into uh, Week 9's matchups, go through them real quick, break it down. Because I know the bye week's affecting a lot of teams this week. Uh, all right, we're going to look at the first one on the list. Uh, Polish Pounder versus Pounder's Pussy Pounders. So a lot of pounding going on in this matchup. Uh, hoping that the Polish side comes out on this one. Um, you know, Jabby's got some tough matchups. Ray Rice against Pittsburgh. I mean, they shut down the run. Um, you know, but LaShawn McCoy playing the Bears, so pretty much the same situation. Um, both of us have tough matchups, but hopefully I can come alive um, with a win. I'm trying to think anybody on the bye. 
you know, nobody really relevant to uh, starting status. But um, good matchup here. You know, two teams that are, you know, both started out bad but are really come alive as of late. Um, so we're going to see if any one of those can really make a push to make a playoff spot. Uh, Autobot Revolution versus Kiss My Ash. After last week's tough loss, uh, Ashley actually has a tough task ahead of her, surprisingly. Um, you know, a lot of Aaron's players coming well-rested off a of bye week. Um, Aaron Rodgers gets San Diego's defense. Aaron Rodgers probably going to pick them apart. Um, you know, he's got all his players back. He's got Forte back. Andre Johnson's ex uh, expected to play. Um, but, I mean, you look at this. Ashley Zuzan, Cam Newton, Adrian Peterson. I mean, Greg Olson not really going to be a factor. She's going to start Jermichael Finley. Um, but Peyton Hillis and Garrett Blunt have been questionable every week um, with injuries. So she's got a tough task. And, I mean, you never know. Her team is good enough. But you got to look at, you know, the bye weeks. Cam Newton, she's been riding him. Without her, she would probably be 2-6 and six, um, because Phillip Rivers has been so bad. But, you know, great pick for her. He's been amazing. Uh, I know there's been a lot of talk about Cam Newton and Christian Ponder. So, like, again, league activity's been good um, from a few people. So I'm actually going to take Aaron in this one just because of her two studs being on the bye week. It's going to be really tough for her to replace that unless Phillip Rivers can come alive, which, you know, you don't know, especially against Green Bay's defense. They're nasty. Um, all right, going to Team Badasses versus the Regulators. We got two COs. Heading off in this one, um, you know, two teams that are really fighting for playoff spots. Um, Jabby's first in the NFC at 5-3. and three. Mike's 4-4. Four and four. Uh, Mike's taking a big hit here. He's got the Lions defense on bye, especially Maurice Jones-Drew on the bye, uh, which is, you know, his number one running back. Jabby's not really hurt by anyone on the bye uh, at all. You know, Mike will get Darren McFadden back this week, so that'll really help him out. Um, but, you know, I got to go with Jabby. He's been scoring a lot of points lately. He's proven a lot of people wrong. Um... So, you know, I definitely got to go with Jabby here, improving to 6-3, and three, uh, taking over Mike at 4-5. and five. But, uh, yeah, Jabby's team's just been, I mean, if you look at his scoring every week, it's really consistent. It's looking really good for him. I know a matchup that I think might be a sleeper alert. You never know. Um, basically because his two studs are out. You're looking at Megatron's Army versus Make It Wayne. Um, you know, Brock's losing Matt Stafford and Calvin Johnson this week. He's getting Cedric Benson back, who was on, um, who was on suspension. Uh, but he's still got Des Bryant, Mike Wallace, Nate Washington. You know, so he still has weapons here that can get him points. If you look at Eric, he's getting Greg Jennings back. He's going to get Plaxico back against Buffalo. Buffalo's been a good defense. They're not as soft as they used to be. Um, Ravens defense playing play Pittsburgh. So, um, you know, that affects Mike Wallace as well as Aaron owning Ravens defense. Um, look at for DeMarco Murray in this one against Seattle. I mean, he could have a big week. Beanie Wells as well. Uh, and, and you look at Houston versus Cleveland, that's huge matchups for Eric. Um, you know, Eric's got a lot of matchups in his favor. So this could be one of the close weeks where Brock will get tested and give him, you know, get a run for his money. Uh, so really look for this matchup. I'm going to take Eric based on the fact that Brock is missing Stafford and Megatron and Eric's matchups are just that fucking good. Um... Jumping over to Titletown USA and Bolingbrook Blue Ballers. Um, you know, this is a must win, I feel, for each team, even though, like I said, the divisions are tight. John's, you know, got two uh, losses in a row. Finally got his full team back. Uh, he really needed that. Jared, you know, looking at a couple matchups here. Um, a lot of his running backs are kind of injured. For, he's got, shut the fuck up. He's got the bye week uh, for Steve Smith and Javid Best. Um, you know, so it's going to be tough sledding in this one for Jared, but John really needs a victory here. I know John's been stressing out at work, uh, so have I. We've been under some heat with uh, all sorts of shit, but, uh, so I feel him, but I think John's going to get the victory in this one. So that wraps up week nine, guys. Um, looking at um, matchups here. Uh, so that'll wrap it up for week nine. Real quick with my last 30 seconds, I want to talk about league activity, which I'll be posting a video on this. I wish everyone would be as active as half the owners in this league. We probably got about four or five guys who are super active, and then about five or six who aren't very active. Um, yeah, I appreciate everyone switching your rosters and picking up guys and looking for trades, but you know we need to have everyone, um, you know, comment on polls and you know write in comments. It's really appreciated. But I'll talk more on this, guys. I'm running out of time. I got five seconds, so thank you very much. Good luck this week and have fun. All right, later, guys.